Political Buzz is your rapid-fire look at the best political topics of the day. Three topics, 30 seconds on the clock. Playing with us today, CNN political analyst Roland Martin. and CNN Hey! Hi! And CNN <laughs> contributor and analyst for The Blaze, Will Kane. Hello, Will. Hello. Hello. Okay, first question. The drone, a remote-controlled killing machine, now a hero? Outgoing Defense Secretary Leon Panetta wants to honor the people who operate unmanned aircraft. I'm pleased to announce that I formally approve the establishment of a new Distinguished Warfare Medal. The medal provides distinct department-wide recognition for the extraordinary achievements that directly impact on combat operations, that do, but uh, that do not uh, involve acts of valor or physical risk that combat entails. Now, now, keep in mind the drone medal could outrank the Bronze Star, which is awarded for specific heroic acts performed under fire in combat. Wow. So the question, is drone warfare worthy of a medal of valor, Roland? Well, let's see. You're sitting in an air-conditioned room and you have a joystick and you're sort of playing uh, a video game, if you will. Uh, it's life and death. There's no way in the world that should outrank somebody who exhibits heroism uh, on the battlefield. That to me is absolutely crazy. Look, I understand you, you, if you want to give an award, a citation, but there's no comparison between the two. It should not outrank the Bronze Star. Will? There's the, there's the issue, right? Should it outrank the Bronze Star? Yes, we should acknowledge the changing nature of warfare, the technological aspects that are changing. Yes, these guys should have some acknowledgement for for the service they're performing. Um, should it outrank the Bronze Star? You asked, should it be an award for valor? It's not, Carol. It's not an award for valor. It's distinguished from that. It just outranks the Bronze Star, which is a medal for valor. Valor, which is defined, by the way, as extraordinary acts of heroism while engaged in direct combat with the enemy, exposing yourself to personal risk. I don't know. That's tough. Zero. That's how many days I've served in the military. <laughs> I would imagine Mil Roland might be the same, so zero yeah, is going to come with some saying, humility. Serious I don't know, a whole lot of words. Eh, we got to move on to, to, to topic two. Here's the drone. Topic two. Right here. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk more about this in the next hour of Newsroom. <laughs> Question two today for Political Buzz, though. Frustration over sequestration. President Obama on the road to push his agenda. He'll be in Georgia later today. It's kind of a shame he's not in D.C. pushing Congress to come up with a budget deal. Hello, North Carolina. He's taking to the road for the next few days in basically what I would call campaign mode. He seems to always stay in a campaign mode where he treats people of the other party as the enemy, not as partners. If he really wanted to get things done and govern, he would come here and work with us instead of campaigning all around the country. Yes, if there is no budget deal by March 1st, massive cuts to defense, Medicare, and more. Question, should the president skip the road trip and take a trip to Capitol Hill? Will? Yes. It's a little special, right? Isn't it just a little special that the president not only agreed to this, but proposed this idea back in the Budget Control Act of 2011, the idea of sequestration. It was supposed to be such a you know, painful idea for Republicans that they would never let it happen. And then, just what, two months ago, the president got the tax increases he thought would avert some of this, and Republicans would, would never let these spending cuts come in, but they're going to let it happen. So it's a little special that President Obama is now campaigning, essentially, against the thing he proposed, the thing he agreed to. He got his half of the deal in the special tax increases, but now he wants to avoid the, the spending cuts. Roland. Oh, please, of course he can. How about doing both? You can actually go on a road trip and still also talk to Cap Capitol Hill. And last I checked, Congress, they can actually, they have to pass the bill first. And so why don't they actually get to work? Why can't Boehner get with Pelosi? Why can't McConnell get with Reid? That's their job, okay? And also, remember the special committee? That is, Democrats and Republicans, they were supposed to come together to avoid the sequester. They couldn't even come to an agreement. So I would say to, uh, to, to, to Congressman Paul Ryan, stop whining, complaining. Tell your House members and Senate members to do their job. Yeah, well, you know they're going to kick the can down the road. Of course, and that's yeah, the problem. Okay. Question three, question three. Finally, on the day that Cupid is flying through the air, slinging his arrows of love, we have this question. <laughs> Who are the most unlikely political valentines? And I'd like to go first on this one. Uh, House <laughs> Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi and pretty much any Republican out there. <laughs> um, Will? Well, I'm going to pick Piers Morgan, 
uh, the guy on a few hours from now, and Wayne LaPierre, the president of the National Rifle Association, because for the past couple months, um, we've had a gun control debate where, look, I'm going to tell you something. Pierce does not have the, uh, the facts, the substance, and the intellect on his side, so he's Woo! villainized. Specifically, Wayne LaPierre. Wayne LaPierre has been turned into the villain of the gun control debate. Ooh. Happy Valentine's Day, Ooh. sweethearts. Oh, oh, Roland. Okay, okay, hold on a second, hold on. Okay, I'm ready. All right. Um, <laughs> I, I, was, I would say Congressman Steve Stockman of Texas and Congresswoman Maxine Waters of California. Okay? <laughs> Those two. What happened to Maxine Waters' photo? What happened? What? There it oh, is. Trust me. It's there. there it is. There. You got crazy Steve Stockman. If you want to read the funny pages, read his press releases. He's the guy who invited Ted Nugent to the State of the Union. And again, I'm sure Congresswoman Waters would just smack him beside the head with roses all day long. <laughs> Although I saw her talking to Ted Nugent at the State of the Union. There is photographic proof of that, Roland Martin. No, 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 no. That was Congresswoman Sheila Jackson oh, Lee. Darn it. It was taken from don't, the don't, back. Don't get the black women of Congress mixed up, Carol. <laughs> I think I have to go on that point. Well, Kate Roland Martin, <laughs> thanks so much. Cheers. You bet. Bye. Cheers. Get out of here.